memoriam, a tribute to Flat Earth. In loving memory of Michael Miller, also known as Doc Michael, on YouTube. I don't know his birth year, but he passed in 2021. Here are some pictures of Doc Michael from FEIC 2017 and 2018. He was well known throughout the community and he was a really nice man and we'll definitely miss him in the live chats and at the events. Rest in peace, Doc. In loving memory of Jason Torres, also known as GB Jedi. GB was the subject of an article about the Flat Earth that was published on the front page of the Boston Globe, a very good article. GB was pretty smart, and I think he's the one who discovered that satellites were balloons, or the first to propose the idea. Hi guys, JJ here. I want to share something with you guys and get, you know, get your two cents on this. High Tech NASA balloon is on a trip around the globe. Uh-huh. So, I'm thinking maybe this is how they do satellites on a flat Earth. Maybe this is how they did it at first, back in the Sputnik days. And this is what people were seeing with Sputnik, or America's first satellites. This is probably how they did it. This is how it would be done on a flat earth, especially in the 1950s. One of these things go down, what do you call it? Weather balloon. Saw a UFO. That's a weather balloon. Now this UFO came oh, down boy. in my backyard. It was a weather balloon. Yeah, weather balloon. These are all weather balloons, aren't they? Technically, that's not a lie. They're designed for handling weather, right? Is it a lie? No, it's a play on words. Woo! And here we go. There's our satellites. Flat Earth satellite, away! GB Jedi's YouTube page is still there as an archive. Go check it out. Rest in peace, our good friend GB. We will definitely miss you and your good humor and your kindness and your fairness. Thank you. In loving memory of Mac Parhar, also known as Flat Earth Fokker. Mac was fearless and he could not stand order followers and he challenged them daily. I'd like to see a doctor. Yeah, can I get tested? Do you have any symptoms? Well, yesterday I did. What I were the symptoms yesterday? yesterday? But yesterday I had a sore throat. We probably won't test you here either. We're the same health authority. The answer's not gonna be any different. Okay. Their, yeah. their advice is correct. If you're not acutely ill, you should be staying home. We don't do swabs unnecessarily. Um, the, the, the guideline is stay home and call 811 for guidance. Okay. So it's up to but you. But I don't want to die. But we can't swab everybody, unfortunately. And I can't, if you're young and healthy, there's no, in the, you're not severely ill, there's no need for a swab. So what, I'm trying to understand what the pandemic is. Well, the numbers. But more people have the flu. I not, thought it's killer. But the death rate now is higher on the COVID. It's still... Like, it's still less than the flu. It's not, no. The flu is 0 0.05 to 0.1%. The death rate on corona is almost 4%. Of the population? No, no, no. The rate of mortality, if you get the bug. But what about the population? I don't understand. It, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to debate it. I'm, I'm not debating. I'm trying um, to educate myself. So, but unfortunately, I can't, I can't take that on right now. Um, can I help you see a doctor or not? Well, you said I can't get tested. It's okay. probably more than likely not, I would think. Okay. Oh, wow, this lady's got quite the... These guys have the so gas can mask. Can you wait back there, please? Yeah, so um, I don't want to hold people up. I, like, you know, I, I so wanted to get swabbed, 
But I don't want to, you know, I, I'm also trying to get educated here. The news is the best place. CDC is the best place on their uh, website. Oh, really? Yep. But I'm finding a lot of contradictory stories out there. So listen, I have to unfortunately help the next person. Okay. My suggestion would be to go on the CDC, not Facebook, not social media, the Center for Disease Control. Okay. I just talked to these people that went to visit. We came from the other side. They've been here for the last two weeks. They said the hospital is like a ghost town. There's nobody in there. It's, it's quieter, yes. We're definitely seeing less people. That's how it should be. But where's the pandemic? That's so what, because I'm, what I, I'm in living in world, fear. In the whole world. But in my own life, I haven't met anybody that's dying or has a then corona. Then thank your lucky stars and go home and stay there. But why am sleep. I in fear? But I'm, why am I living in such fear and being locked down and not able to do anything when I don't have any evidence of this in my life? I don't know what to tell you, sir. Do you know anybody with the COVID person? Yes, in the hospital here. You've met them? Yes. Okay. okay. And people are dying? Yes. All right. At a rapid and shocking case. Really? Yes. Can I go to the morgue and check? Go home. Okay, thanks, nurse. For those who remember, I did have a Flattoberfest in 2020 during the height of the pandemic, and Mac did fly down from Canada and join us, and he had a wonderful time, and we certainly enjoyed having him. But that was the beginning of his troubles. No, yeah, the staff was really great. The, the event center was really great. Um, there was no issues. Our point here is we got to live our life. Like, for, you know, that's why I titled it Statism. A lot of belief for those of you guys, everybody I see coming in here is like a truth there. You guys are already woke. But if there's by chance anybody that's watching that's buying into all this fear, you're ruining our life. You're ruining life for everybody, the enjoyment of what is life. You know, we went to Waffle House yesterday and they had two tables closed off. Some people coming in with masks, some people uh, have like the, some people are wearing masks. Uh, is serving I mean cooking mm -hmm. but there's nothing happening it's just fear that's what everybody lives in yeah. you, you got you guys just want to follow orders you just know how to obey just use your brain for a little bit look around what's happening shortly after Mac returned to Canada a neighbor in his building called the police and told them he was not obeying the COVID-19 quarantine rules after leaving the country and he was arrested and as he says they proceeded to ruin his life and his yoga business was the first business to close due to the COVID pandemic. So this is the guy who got charged under the uh, Quarantine Act in BC. Um, right, we were support we supported uh, last Monday and tomorrow. Okay, so well, we're gonna start morning. with the history of the globe live. Raul says, tell everybody how the globe is alive. Hello. Okay. Just, just one minute though. How many flat earthers here? Scream loud. The, re the rest of you are all flat earthers, you just don't know it. Those of you guys don't know what's going on and uh, why I'm up here talking. Um, if you missed it back in March, I made Global News, Hit Peace, Mike Farnsworth. Uh, he's my biggest fan and uh, he loves Global News and they made, um, you know, I, did, I didn't want to close my studio so they shut me down. And of course I got like a lot of hit pieces and etc. a lot of hate from the public. So I lost my business, 11 years in business. And I lost that because of this convict 19 like. Um, and then, you know, as that's dying down, I was down at Flattoberfest um, about a month ago. Hey, Donald. I was down at Flattoberfest and for five days, six days, four days, two days of travel. I come back. They want me to self in prison for 14 days after a four day trip. And, you know, that quarantine act, like it's basically they're like, go keep yourself in your own prison. And uh, I wasn't going to do that. And I got, uh, you know, I gave him a little hard time at the uh, airport, so I got flagged. And then I got a neighbor that doesn't really like me, kept phoning the police and public health on me. So they had to make an example out of me. Yeah, yeah, a rat. We got a, I got a rat in my building, right? So that's what people like to do, and that's what they're doing right now. They're like, oh, that guy's not wearing a mask. Call the cops. She's not wearing a mask. Call the cops. That's, that's the world we're living in. Anyways. I got two tickets for 1150 and then I got arrested, no fingerprints, no pictures, no charges, but I spent four days in jail. Jail. Does that make any sense? They wouldn't let me use the phone and they kept me in segregation because they thought I had COVID-19. 
it's kind of weird, but then they come to check my vitals and said you're perfectly healthy, nothing wrong with you. But you could be carrying this deadly disease, and you're going to infect the whole prison and kill everybody in here. So this is a crazy world that we live in, right? It's so like, um, you know, you go there, the guard walks in, like, nothing against these guys, but I don't know if it's their job or protocol or what. They come in wrapped in saran wrapped with masks and shields and gloves, and the nurse comes in wearing gloves and a little surgical mask. I don't understand, so like, you know, why aren't you guys consistent in how you're coming in here and dealing with me? Anyway, so I spent four days in jail, I got out, I went to court last week, and they basically, you know, I, I stood up to them with common law, and the judge didn't know what to do with me, so they're probably going to be more prepared tomorrow at the courthouse, 11 a.m. They don't want me back at the courthouse because they said, here's a, a Zoom number, meet number, so next week do your hearing from home. Because they don't want like all of you guys there at the courthouse and they don't want the media there. They don't want this uh, fraud exposed. You know, these uh, statutes and acts that they're um, uh, dictating over us. Mac would continue to be tied up in court for the next year, fighting against the Canadian government until his untimely passing on November 4th, 2021. A prominent COVID-19 denier and flat earth conspiracy theorist who was arrested for violating the Quarantine Act last year has died. The BC Coroner Service confirms it is investigating the death of Makan Singh Parhar. I haven't been sick in like so long and it just hit me so I'm like what's going on here? Parhar posted this video online around two weeks ago describing COVID-like symptoms but saying COVID is quote fake. The cause of Parhar's death has not yet been determined. Bahar was arrested in November 2020 for allegedly failing to obey quarantine rules after returning from a flat earth conference in the U.S. He later tried to sue the B.C. government, but the lawsuit was dismissed. As you can see, the media is never kind to those who try to expose lies. Mac was one of our strongest voices, and he was always flat smacking and trying to free minds and get people to gain the knowledge they needed so they no longer need to live in fear. Thank you, Mac Parhar. We will miss you, and you will forever be in our hearts. In loving memory of Mike Helmick. Mike Helmick was a Christian flat earther, and he did talk a lot about flat earth from the Christian point of view. He also did a lot early on to show us how easy it was for NASA and other space agencies to fake weightlessness on the ISS in great detail. I'm going to show you in this video how NASA faked zero-G without a vomit comet or a zero-G plane. Now, I've heard a lot of theories from other flat earthers of some big energy fieldy, sound wavy uh, thing that pushes matter up in the air through sheer energy, but, uh, but to be honest, <laughs> Some of the theories did sound like two healthy choices to me. No, I've been praying about it, and the Lord finally revealed to me uh, one video. And I work with Blender and Unity, and I've been working with special effects software and Photoshop for quite a while now. And when I saw this video, I realized it became instantly clear how they do it. And it's just video game technology. Now, if you're part of the geek squad or the techie crowd, well, then you've you already know about this technology. And so let's get to the video that caught my attention and you will see the same things that I saw. Let's watch. We have to introduce the concept of free fall. So let's use this model of the earth and let's enlist the help of a friend, Patsy. You might know her. The only way you're gonna pull that off is with one technology. And that technology is virtual reality. More importantly though, something called augmented virtual reality. Now before 2012, NASA used masking techniques like much like we do in Photoshop and After Effects. Um, but now we're able to simulate water and objects live in real 3D space. So we're able to take models of things that are photorealistic and rotate and move them while we are going live. Um, before, we used to have to render these effects frame by frame by frame, and it took extremely long amounts of time. We now have the technology to simulate water, uh, materials, fabrics live in real 3D space 
with virtual reality, but better yet, augmented virtual reality. And all augmented virtual reality is, is taking the objects in 3D space from a virtual reality world and putting them in our world on another screen, which we can see, manipulate, and touch with virtual reality contacts or glasses. In this next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. Yes, live. And do it all in real time. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to them as they're grabbing objects and manipulating them. And then I'm going to show you Microsoft's Holosense video, uh, their demonstration E3 a couple years ago, of bringing a virtual reality into our world. And it is simply amazing. Let's watch. Specifically how HoloLens can turn every room of your house into a personalized video game level. But today, we want to take mixed reality one step further. So we've got something new to show you. Holograms you can hold. This holographic gauntlet is the weapon that Dan will be using while playing Project X-Ray. You'll notice that as he moves his arm, the hologram moves as well. This is a wearable hologram. And when you combine technology like this with the environment understanding of HoloLens, you can do some pretty spectacular things. And can even use his shield to defend himself. Nicely done. Looks like that's all of them. Okay, so you see to the right this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's They're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him. But the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see. And so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. Mike Helmick's YouTube channel still remains as an archive. Please go check it out and give him a sub. And thank you so much, Mike Helmick, for all of your work and your kindness. We'll miss you. In loving memory of Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba was an award-winning documentary filmmaker and the best-selling author of several books, and he created the website TestingTheGlobe.com, which was one of the first Flat Earth-related resource websites. Rob was a Christian, and he taught a lot about Flat Earth from that perspective, but he also approached it from a scientific and observational point of view. For this reason, Rob Skiba quickly became one of my favorite channels to watch. He playfully said that Mark Sargent ruined his life on April 15th, 2015, which is when Rob came across Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues. From then on, he never stopped searching for truth and learning as much as he could about our realm and how it worked. Rob has a very impressive catalog of videos and work still up at his YouTube channel, including one of the most popular, which is when Rob Skiba proved that the Chicago skyline was not a mirage. What you're seeing here is a mirage. You typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage 
of the Chicago skylight. Very interesting. Here, here's what's happening. This is a, a good example of a superior mirage. So Joshua was on the Lake Michigan shore. He was looking towards the west, and Chicago's beyond the horizon. Should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky up in space. But instead, we're able to see it on the Lake Michigan shore. Okay, so after I saw that, and looking at that picture, I'm sorry, there's just, there's no way that's a mirage. And, and I, I couldn't accept that. Uh, my friend Rick Hummer couldn't accept that either. He said, you know, we've all seen it. We live, anybody who lives in this area can look across the lake. We've all seen Chicago. And uh, he and I put together a plan to just drive toward the city, get in a boat and head to the city and drive back. Because if it's a mirage, then it's just going to magically disappear. And then the city will roll up over the ball. And, you know, that would be what we would expect to happen. But if it's not a mirage, then the city is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, or smaller and smaller and smaller, depending on which way you're going. So, all right. So this, this video will be just sort of a highlight video. I'm going to keep it short. Uh, then I'm going to do another much longer video explaining a little bit more about what we were doing and why we were doing it. And especially my feelings after it was over and uh, where I am now with uh, the research that I've been doing. So with that in mind, let me just say that this video and the purpose really of, of the trip, the one goal I had was to prove that what people are seeing from the other side of Lake Michigan is not a mirage, that they are actually seeing the city. That was my goal going there. I believe we achieved that goal. And so that is the primary focus of this video. So here's our boat, New Buffalo Harbor, and this is where we fish out of. So we'll take the range out to be southern Lake Michigan. Cool. That'll give us there's a distance. The, yeah, that'll give us a distance when I move the cursor over to the river. So that's all the way across. It's 37.07, 36.87 miles to the pierhead there. Cool. We'll awesome. shoot for that, and then as we get closer, you guys can just tell me which shot you want. Okay. So we got a 280 degree heading for 35, 36 miles. All right. So we'll get we'll get trucking over that way. If you need to slow down, just let me know. I'll go about 28 miles an hour, an hour or so. Cool. So how far are we right now? 37 nautical miles on a heading at 280. And okay. So what do you think, Rob? I can I can see Chicago. We're about 42 miles away. I can see it. The problem is trying to get the the camera's having trouble focusing on it because it's moving up and down and it's so zoomed in. But I can totally see it. But it's just not fair. That's amazing. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Say that again, Tony. That, that is a heck of a mirage right there. Yeah. And hey, just so you know, this whole time, what has been our heading? Our heading has been 280 degrees, which is just 10 degrees uh, off of due west. But we also were using, what was our focal point? Our focal point was the Sears Tower. Which is also known as the Willis Tower, right? Yes, the Willis Tower. The Willis Tower, and we can see it the entire time. We can see it the entire time, and every morning that I fish, I can usually see two of the three. And then when the sun hits the city, you can see three of the three almost every morning, as long as it's clear. And is it because there's a haze and it, you finally, like, cut through the haze? There's yeah, it haze finally cuts through the haze. The sun angle, as soon as it gets high enough, it hits that white building and it just shines. Gotcha. When it's zoomed in, it's almost impossible to, to keep it. But you don't even need to zoom in. I mean, it's right there. Hey, man. Well, we're on the bow of the boat. So, Rob, explain what you're seeing on the haze. Purple haze, man. <laughs> well, see, no. what a lot of people mistake well, no. as, a, as a curb, it's yeah. the haze. I've become more and more convinced that what we think is the, the, the water being uh, obscuring the bottom of ships is the same illusion that we see when we see uh, uh, cars driving out in front of you on a long straight road. Yeah. It, it looks like the car disappears wheel first into the road, and, and it looks like it's almost going into water. But it's not. It's just a mirage. And then when you drive to the same spot, the car that disappeared in front of you, when you drive to that same spot, now all of a sudden you disappeared uh, to the guy behind you. Right. So I believe it, that what we may be looking at is an optical illusion. Well, uh, I mean, if we want to talk about a mirage, that's not a mirage. That's not a mirage. But what, when we see things disappear, I think that what we're seeing this is, is disappearing due to a mirage-like effect of the water, and we can see the haze at the bottom of the city right there, obscuring. Well, and the, that's, yeah, that's go ahead. Go ahead. Obscuring the, the haze right now is obscuring the bottom of the city. You can see that right there. But I think that we also see the same effect with water. That water can do the same, create the same type of illusion that we're seeing with the haze right there, obscuring the lower part of, of uh, a city or a boat or whatever you're looking at across the way. There's a guy right there that I do believe is going to finally come out and say it's flat. It's flat. Uh, and we were about eight nautical miles uh, off the coast of Chicago there and uh, didn't really see any need to go any further. We, we saw everything we needed to see and we were running kind of late, needed to get back and actually running a little bit low on fuel too. So I said, you know, yep, just head back. I'm going to set up some cameras and uh, point them at the city so we can watch it the whole way back and show everybody that it's not a mirage. Rob has quite an impressive body of work. Many of his videos are used to this day, and you might not even know that it came from Rob. Thank you, Rob, for your passion and your tenacity and for having a love of truth and for the gifts that you have given us that keep on giving. In loving memory of Bob Nodell. Bob Nodell was the host of the popular Sunday show Globebusters and one of the forces in Flat Earth. Bob was intelligent and he had a talent for explaining complex subjects in a way that made it easy for us to understand. Bob was a loyal friend to all of us, as well as a husband and father. He was also the first to defend me or anyone fiercely when we were the target of online instigators. He was a staple at every Flat Earth conference since 2017. In fact, Bob helped me start doing live events, and it is because of Bob and Cammie's help that we are all sitting here together in this room today. Bob was extremely excited about the Las Vegas conference. He wanted it to happen in 2020, and we started to plan it when the world was shut down for the pandemic COVID-19. It is heartbreaking that he can't be with us here tonight, but we dedicate this event to you, Bob. 
We celebrate your life and your work, and we will truly miss you. There is a definite void in the community without you. Please enjoy these short clips of Bob. You might already be signed up for the Flat Earth International Conference. Jamie Leary was curious. Jamie, you found it shouldn't be that surprising that they're gathering here in Denver. Not at all. And you can actually stream Flat Earth information live 24-7. The guy who created this channel, he is, it's called Globe Busters, and he lives right here in Denver. Denver has one of the largest concentrations of Flat Earthers around, which is why this is the second international conference being held right here in Denver. Now, we talked to the man behind this YouTube channel to find out what flat earthers are all about. We are of the opinion that not only is the earth flat, and I don't, I don't mean there's not surface features like mountains and stuff like that, but we're not on an actual ball. It's a plane. Bob Nodell is well known in the flat earth community. His YouTube channel draws international attention, for better or for worse. I get a lot of death threats, uh, stuff like that. People do not like this subject at all. You can decide for yourself. Join us in Denver this November for the Flat Earth International Conference 2018. The billboard for the convention just went up along E-470. People can go there, be uninhibited about their beliefs, what they think, they can discuss it openly and freely. As a pilot and engineer, Bob used to think it was crazy. One of the theories he now believes. Flat Earthers also do not believe that there is any th such thing as space. And that's a crazy claim, right? So what about astronauts? The space shots are actually sh shot in a swimming pool. And they are shot in a place that's called the NASA Neutral Buoyancy Lab, OK? And in this Neutral Buoyancy Lab, they have a full-sized mock-up of the ISS. Bob knows this is controversial. He welcomes debates and says, Investigate it yourself. Do your own research. That's what matters. One other question that she asked, and a lot of people ask this question, and I think it's a good question, so we're going to also address it really quick. So she goes, I'm on board with many things. There are still questions I have, but I can definitely see why there are so many flat earthers. The question her husband gave her, however, is, if it's true, does it change how I live my life? For me, I have to say no. It would be nice if it's true for the government to acknowledge and stop charades However, I find it really hard, especially knowing someone that works for NASA and his job is to get new packages ready, yada, yada, yada. So again, what difference does it make? Like I said, that's a great question. This is something that is not an easy answer because of the magnitude of what we're talking about here. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. Will it change you from having to go to your job every day and the things that you typically do every day? No, but when this knowledge becomes more mainstream and these agencies are starting to be held accountable and you understand that they're all participating in this, not just the United States government, not just NASA, but China, Russia, India, all of them have space programs. They all have the same symbolism. They're all doing the exact same thing to their citizenry. And the first thing you have to understand about this is that the deception goes all the way to the top. And when I say all the way to the top, you have to kind of get rid of the notion that the people at the very highest levels are working together. The people that control the world are not, we're not against each other. There was never any such thing really as the Cold War. We're really not enemies with anybody else. This is all a facade that's being brought on for our benefit. But the people that are in power, that have all the money, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Morgans, the on and on and on, these are the people that literally run the central banking system, which of course has permeated the entire world. And any country that tries to get away from it, their leaders are quickly assassinated. It goes on and on and on. So you have to understand conspiracies a little bit to understand the magnitude of this deception. So why would they do this? Why are they trying to hide the fact that we are on an infinite plane uh, or on a flat earth rather than a ball. Well, the answer to that, there's a lot of answers to that, but in my personal opinion, if you isolate people into the idea that they're on a blue marble that's in the middle of a universe that is really insignificant and there's thousands or millions and billions of other worlds and possibly other civilizations, that makes most people think that we are insignificant and that we did actually come about as some sort of an accident. Now, when people believe that, their minds are much more malleable 
into being given the idea that there is no God, there is no creator, that all of this is just some sort of random happenstance. And because of that, that also gives the controllers this fertile soil to build other deceptions on. And it's all about control. Remember, it's not about money. Money is irrelevant. They print the money. Money is just something that you and I agree has value, but it really is just pieces of paper, right? <laughs> These people are printing the money. They can print money all day long if they want to, and they do. <laughs> so it's not about that, and it's not just about power either. It's about total control, mental, physical, spiritual, every way, shape, and form possible. And to wrap your head around this type of deception, whether you're religious or not, if you're religious, then you understand that this is Satan's plan all along. If you're not religious, then you need to understand that people are power hungry and they will do anything to gain and maintain this type of control. Bob, Great, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Unlike many of the people I met at the conference, whose flat earth beliefs stem from a literal interpretation of the Old Testament, Bob's approach is based on scientific rationalism. I've always been a little bit different. I've always seen the world a little bit different. I was put in special schools. They said that, you know, I had a genius IQ, which, you know, whatever. But I had a hard time relating to other people and the world in general. And I never was able to understand why the world seems to be so messed up. You know, why all these wars? Why all the killing? Why do they spend so much money on things like this when they could just spend that same money and fix the problems? If you were shown mm -hmm. conclusive proof of a globe Earth with your own eyes, mm -hmm. how would you feel and would you be able to adjust your viewpoint to match? Honestly, I would be relieved. I would be, because that would mean that this nightmare is over. Is it a nightmare? It is. It is a nightmare because we're going against the, the entire belief system of the entire world. I certainly do not want to be in the position that I'm in, you know, being ridiculed, being fired from jobs. Nobody wants that. And the only reason I do it is because I, I truly care about the future of, of humanity. Bob took me up to the Red Rocks Amphitheater on the edge of the Rocky Mountains to cast a view out over the flat horizon. What are your hopes and expectations for the future of Flat Earth? My hopes are for all this to go through as, as seamlessly as possible without you know bloodshed and without you know too much conflict but the people that really run this world are not going to let go of that power easily in the short term things are going to get a lot worse before they get better but when things do start getting better we're going to go into what i would term as a more utopian type of word instead of dystopian like we're at clearly headed for everyone i've spoken to when you really boil it down what people want is the same as what anyone wants to have some sort of agency, to be relevant to something, to have love, you know, all these things. Yes. Do you feel then that, that Flat Earth really, really delivers that in a way that the globe Earth never could, perhaps? Of course people are going to want to feel like they're part of something and not so insignificant. You know, that, that makes perfect sense. So yeah, when you, when you realize that and you realize that this world is much more special and you are much more special, then yeah, it makes a huge psychological impact. Absolutely. And from the deepest depths of all of our hearts. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.